Hi, I'm Marissa DeFratti, a product engineer on the ArcGIS Hub team. Today, Manushi and I will take you from data to decisions in ArcGIS Hub. ArcGIS Hub is a cloud-based software that extends and integrates all of your data and content in ArcGIS Online. People build hubs to share open data with their local citizens, to connect small volunteer groups for larger impact, and to manage resources and information during natural disasters, and much, much more. In all of these applications, your data and visualizations have traditionally been primary sources of information. But with ArcGIS Hub, you open your data to new possibilities by inviting outsiders in through community accounts. With this account, which is configured as a creator user type with a publisher role, people can explore data that you've shared because you're in control. They can build maps in ArcGIS Online, write stories using ArcGIS Story Maps, and more, or less. It's up to you. To maximize the potential of ArcGIS Hub, you first need to add some data. In this session, we'll show you how to get data into ArcGIS Hub, how to consume and analyze it in an ArcGIS notebook, and then how to use the results to populate charts and statistics on your site. Back to you, Manushi. Thanks, Marissa. Hi, I'm Manushi Majumdar, a data science product engineer on the ArcGIS Hub team. Today, I'll kick off our demo by showing a few simple steps to add your data to the WebGIS. Adding your data to the LGS uh, platform is extremely easy and straightforward and can be then used effectively in your RGS Hub applications as well as for analysis. So as we see, this particular massive Excel or CSV file can be very easily added to the RGS platform and then in, in a demo following, we'll see how it can be used. This particular website is the website for the agricultural marketing services of the US Department of Agriculture. It focuses on creating domestic as well as international opportunities to sell food and other produce. They also provide the agricultural industry with, with the necessary services for sustenance. I invite you to take a look at this website and the other data sets they have available. The data set we'll be working today with is the National Farmers Market Directory. This uh, directory helps you filter and uh, fetch data for a particular zip code. It also helps you fetch data for the uh, for a particular kind of uh, produce that's available that you're looking for. Also based on the payment techniques that are accepted by the farmers markets. What we will be doing today is filtering this data set for the state of California and then fetching all these farmers markets as a particular CSV file. So let's click on this button right here to export to Excel. Having done that, we see that, a partic that, that this particular data set has been exported successfully. We now log in to our RGS online organization and sign in. Having done that, we go into the content tab. Here we can add this particular data set as a new item. You can add data on from your computer, which is in the form of a CSV file as we've just downloaded, or for that matter, even data that's available in a JSON, GeoJSON or a shapefile. You can also add data from a URL in case your data is available as a web service hosted somewhere. You can add data uh, as a link to a particular application or data that's hosted on a particular cloud location. We start by adding this data, which is on our computer. As this data is being processed, we can now give it a suitable name, which is California Farmers Market, for example. We also give it a few necessary uh, tags that help us in searching and filtering it. So let's say Dev Summit and Food Access. Um, food Access as relevant tags. We also ensure that the correct fields are taken in as the uh, location coordinates. So we observe that the X field is marked as the longitude and the Y field is marked as the latitude. We now add this particular data as an item. 
This publishes it as a feature service. This landing page for this particular item is called the item details page. You can change a lot of metadata such as the thumbnail or for that matter even the snippet and description. You, you can perform operations like publishing this particular uh, data, sharing it or even updating it in case after a few days or weeks or months you fetch newer data. You can also visualize this data in a tabular format to know specific details about certain farmers markets. One thing I'd like to call attention to is this particular unique ID called as the item ID. This is the item ID for this particular uh, uh, hosted feature layer which we'll then be coming to shortly to use when we look at analysis. And with that, I now hand it over to Marissa who's going to show us some cool ways of consuming this data within Hub. So here we have an ArcGIS Hub site which is built to share our data in an engaging way. And even a single data set, if we highlight it in the right way, it can become really interesting information to share. So we'll use cards from the layout builder to add a pre-made map of that farmer's market data. Um, notice that I can look at maps that I own or maps within my organization or anything that's been shared publicly, which includes maps from the Living Atlas. We could also use other cards to embed a web app, a dashboard, or other pieces of content into the site. We can also add charts to spotlight specific categories within the data. Notice again that we can connect to data um, within our content that we own, anything that's been shared publicly, but since I've already added the farmer's market data to the hub site content gallery, I'll just pull it from there. And then let's look at how many of the producers accept SNAP benefits. Let's uh, make the color scheme match our site. And then let's give it a nice title. Now site visitors, they can find their closest farmer's market and they can learn more about how many producers accept SNAP benefits. Next, Manushi will show you how to take this dataset into an ArcGIS notebook and analyze it for insights. We now work with this dataset that we previously added for the farmers markets of California to address some questions using analysis done in ArcGIS notebooks. ArcGIS Notebooks is a capability in ArcGIS available in ArcGIS Enterprise as well as ArcGIS Online that helps you create and host a large number of Jupyter Notebooks. It comes pre-baked with a lot of Python packages and libraries that help you with your data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence workflows. In this particular case, we start by asking the question, how is access to farmers markets distributed across California? Are all the people served equally? In order to address this question, we start out by first importing the GIS submodule of the RGS Python package. Having done that, we now fetch in the farmers markets for California data that we previously added. This is the particular data set. And as I asked us to make note of this unique item ID that we previously uh, fetched when we created this new layer, we'll add it right here. What this does is based on, a, on the unique item ID, it searches across all the content of our GIS and fetches this. It then gets the first layer or the only layer in this case for this item. It queries for all its features, all its rows, and then stores it as a pandas data frame. And then we output the shape that is the number of rows and columns for this data set. As we see, there are 115 rows or 115 unique farmers markets in California, and there are 61 columns available or 61 attributes. This is a tabular view for this uh, data set and we now print out all the columns so we know exactly what information is available for each farmer's market. Now in order to see if the farmer's markets, uh, farmer's markets in California are distributed fairly relative to the population, we first need the population within individual pockets of California. 
as we see in this particular table for the farmers markets we see that for each individual market we have the county uh, given for for the market so we, let's calculate the population or aggregate the population for each individual county in california to then know if the farmers markets are distributed relative to the population of those counties we saw how we had the farmers market uh, data set on our machine we then added it as a new item but what if we don't have the 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 data set for the counties of california on our machine in that case we can look for popular data sets on hub.rjs.com hub.rjs.com allows you to search for a wide variety of data wide variety of administrative boundaries locations as well as different kinds of uh, measures this helps us uh, fetch data from different sources as well as filter them based on different content types as well as the source or the categories associated with it let's pull up the layer for uh, california's counties on this page we see all the attributes that are available we see attributes based on age race as well as gender and population for each county under the data tab we also see a quick view of what the tabular structure of this data looks like although what we are interested in here is the api explorer tab this right here is the query url that is in case you'd like to query against this particular data set this is the url you'd you'd want to use the api endpoint though to use in the python along with the python api is this right here the selected portion we want the particular url until the layer id right here for the feature server let's copy that and bring it back to our notebook so what we do is we use this particular api endpoint um we use this particular api endpoint right here we paste that url that we copied there we then uh, fetch the feature layer associated with this url for the api endpoint of california's counties and then query for all its features and store it as a spatial data frame or a pandas data frame so this process right here is just broken down into individual steps in this particular cell right here and again once we've stored it as a pandas data frame we fetch the shape or the number of rows and columns name feature layer is not defined yes that's what happens with live demos we skip a step so having uh, imported the feature layer uh, module of uh, uh, the feature layer sub module of the features uh, module in rgis the python api we now rerun this piece of code to fetch the counties for california as we see california has 58 counties and there are 52 individual attributes associated with this particular table right here and we we see this data now this particular data set for the farmers markets as we saw gets updated pretty regularly and in order to work with with the population that is the most recent we we need population from 2020 so what we do is we for each county of california we enrich that layer we geo enrich that layer with the population from 2020 for each california county to do that we first uh, import the enrich layer method from this particular uh, sub module of the python api having done that we then fetch the total population for that current year as the the uh, variable we'd like to use for geo enrichment we call the enrich layer uh, method right here and pass to it the particular layer we want to enrich which is the counties in our case i'd like to make a note here that while we have uh, import well we worked with several different types here that is the layer the feature set as well as the table you will need the layer for this kind of analysis the layer file so we pass in the counties layer we pass the particular analysis variable that is the population for 2020 that we'd like to uh, enrich our counties layer with and we provide it with a particular output name 
if you'd like to store it in your in your web gis as a new layer once we've and uh, once we've created this particular method with the necessary parameters we've executed it and shortly we'll visualize it on a map this particular snippet right here creates a map view for the uh, for the extent of california usa and right here we are providing the field that we'd like to visualize on the map as a class color renderer simply put this creates a choropleth map of the population for each county in california population for 2020 so as we see right here this right here is la county and if we scroll to the bottom we see the population for 2020 as well exploring this map Further, we see every county color coded based on the population. The higher the population in each county, the darker the color. We now proceed to work with the farmer's market layer that we previously fetched. We generate drivable areas of up to 30 minutes around each farmer's market. We do that by fetching the create drive time areas method from the RGS features analysis uh, submodule. To, to create drive time areas, we first pass in the particular layer we'd like to create drive time uh, areas around, that is the market item uh, layers. We then add the time difference for which we'd like drive time areas, that is 30 minutes. Uh, we then specify the travel mode, that is driving as opposed to walking. We provide the overlap policy as dissolve and then give an output name to save this in our web GIS. The benefit of using service areas that is creating service areas as opposed to buffers around uh, the particular location is service areas gives you the actual areas that are drivable up to the farmers markets. It also includes uh, routes, the highways, freeways that are drivable and, and it ju just does not assume a, a buffer circular area based on distance. That's why the drivable area gives us a better understanding of which areas, which, which neighborhoods, which counties are actually accessible, are having access to these farmers markets, are accessible to and from these farmers markets. Once this uh, layer is generated, we'll see on the map how how once overlaid these particular uh, uh, counties are served either over served adequately served or underserved by the farmers markets across california we wait while this uh, layer is being generated another note i'd like to make here is changing the travel mode to walking also ensure also makes sure that these particular uh, uh, areas possibly could be shorter in the extent because driving 30 minutes covers a larger area than walking 30 minutes so this particular method it consumes credits for sure but it does account for all these nuances in its execution you can also add a number of uh, values in this particular array that is in case you want to see different kinds of uh, areas based on 10 20 or 30 minute uh, uh, drive distance or drive time i'm sorry you can add all of them as different values in this particular array right here so that's the benefit of using the create drive time areas method available with the python api As we see, this particular layer has been successfully generated. Let's see what it looks like on the map. So there are a number of counties right here, for example. Um, this is the San Joaquin uh, uh, County, as well as this county right below it, or even this one, which is more populous. Uh, known as the Santa Clara uh, County, which don't have drivable access necessarily to all the uh, farmers markets around. 
this is a great way for the residents of these counties as well as the particular local governments to advocate for farmers markets uh, opening up uh, regularly and being made accessible to the residents as we see here the la county has a large number of farmers markets accessible but the eastern parts of southern california don't have access to them uh, as easily so maps like these analyses like these can be powerful tools to advocate for policy changes now that we've built this map let's publish it as a particular web map to our web gis doing that is extremely easy this particular map object where we've added our two layers uh, to visualize right here we we save that as a web map to do that we first verify if our map object our, our our map view object has both the layers as we see it has the population for uh, each county as well as the drivable areas in the correct order we now save this as a particular web map once it's saved as a web map successfully as we notice we then share it and make it publicly accessible to everyone so then marissa can then use it to show us how hub can use this analysis hub can use this map to actually advocate for change advocate for decision uh, changes as well as community engagement let's also take a look at another question while we are at it such as which counties with a number of pet owners are underserved by access to farmers markets that sell pet food earlier when we pulled up the column names for the farmers markets we noticed that a large number of uh, details were provided for what the, the different farmers markets sell right here we noticed that pet food is also one of the uh, different uh, uh, products that these farmers markets could or could not sell and all of them are marked as a binary value which is y or n that is yes or no what we do is we now filter our farmers market data to only include those particular uh, farmers markets or those particular uh, uh, like uh, values that or those features that do carry pet food so by using this particular filter we we reduce uh, the count of farmers markets down to just 22 let's take a look at all of these farmers markets also one thing i'd like to make a note of here is it has skipped a few uh uh farmers markets in the sequence so right after number 1 we have the fifth particular row this could cause issues in some kinds of analyses so in order to avoid that we reset the index resetting the index resetting the index right here helps us to to ensure that um, these particular as we see here these particular uh, rows these particular values are sequential so while here we saw uh, rows of of a few numbers a few values few indexes being missed here resetting the index makes it a sequential uh, data frame for us to work with we now enrich our counties layer with information on which particular households or how many households rather for each county own pets to get this particular piece of information we look at the map viewer of our particular rgs online organization once we are in the map viewer we look under the analysis tab and look at the data enrichment tool right here the data enrichment tool allows you to do the geo enrichment that we did previously where we brought in the total population for each county for from 2020 we select variables right here under the behaviors tab we look at all the behavior uh, variables and we notice this particular clause right here this particular category for 2020 pets and products and this is the particular variable we are interested in that the 2020 household that owns any pet 
As we see in the description in the pop-up right here, we have several headings such as name, variable, source, vintage and definition. We're interested in the variable heading right here because the name uh, that we see under the variable heading that is MP26001H underscore B is the actual variable name for this particular uh, enrichment variable. We use that particular variable name in our analysis. So we br brought that variable in, uh, name uh, right here for the pet owner's uh, variable. And similar to the previous enrichment process, we enrich the counties layer with the analysis variable of our choice, that is the number of households that own a pet. And we then provide an output name in order to save this particular analysis. So what this does is it enriches the each county of California now with the number of uh, households in each county that owns a pet. This gives us information again to build another choropleth map for how many counties here are actually having a large number of pets versus those that have a fewer number and how accessible are those farmers markets to them that sell pet food. Once this analysis is built, we will then take a look at it on a new map where we create another uh, another choropleth map with the variable of our choice. As we see here, there are there are a few counties that have a large number of uh, uh, that have a large number of households with pets. So if we look at LA County, for instance. LA County has a large number of households with pets as opposed to maybe another county right here um, such as the Mariposa County which has fewer pets just 4,862 in comparison. So now that we've built this particular kind of a choropleth map we want to overlay it with those particular uh, uh, farmers markets that sell pet food. Previously, we, we overlaid it by creating drive, drive time areas with the particular feature layer. But here, since we already have a filter that we created right here, this particular uh, table, let's, let's try to visualize that particular uh, data frame uh, and plot that on the map. So having done that, we, we plot that on the map and see that the, the, there are various counties which have farmers markets that sell pet food right here, but they, they're not really situated in counties that have a lot of pet owners versus there could be certain counties right here, for example, that do have a, a, a relatively larger number of, of pet owning families and households, but they don't have drivable access to farmers markets with uh, that sell pet food. So maps like these can be used to address these questions and can be used to make changes to, to advocate for them, to contact our local governments to ensure that we have the kind of services that we need as citizens. Let's now take a look at what Marissa is going to show us using this map. In addition to adding your post analysis maps to the hub site, you can also crowdsource data from site visitors by creating feedback surveys which are built using Survey123 inside of Hub. So if I go to the layout builder over here, I can add a survey card. And we'll just put it right next to the map so people can come and they can kind of see the map and the data content that you're putting out there and feel um, inspired to engage and share their feedback with you. So we can create surveys inside of Hub, but I've already created a survey for this site. So I'll go ahead and add that. And then we'll just make it a little bit smaller for mobile viewers. Now, after we add the survey card, we can actually link the feature layer that um, is connected to it, and it can populate a statistics card that we add to the site. So I'll go ahead and add summary statistics, and we'll make it a bit smaller. Now, I'll link that to the farmer's market experience results. And then I think it would be interesting to look at how frequently people shop at the farmer's market. So I'll go ahead and change the title to Frequent Shoppers. Move the text and then make it a little bit more colorful. 
So now people can see the results that they're sharing dynamically updated in this card. And they can also click on this link and get that data and information for themselves if they want to analyze people's experiences at the farmer's market. So now that the site is flowing with data, you'll want to motivate people to one, come and take a look at it, and two, come and download and start using your data. So we already have a well-designed site, which is giving people an incentive to come and look at what information we're sharing. But to really have them buy in, we want to incentivize them to create a community account. So we can go over here and add a sign up card to the top of the site, which is a really good place to put it. So it's the first thing that people are seeing when they come to your site. Um, we can customize the text if we want, but it looks good for now. And then a neat thing is once people come and they're signed in, we can actually show them different content or different information. So I've just enabled this here so that when someone comes to the site and they log into the site, they now have a button that just takes them straight to viewing the content. And once they um, become part of the organization and they sign in, they'll gain access to rows that you've actually designated as limited to um, community users or the groups that community users are specifically in, which I've done down here. So we know this is a view limiting row because it has a yellow outline around the box. And we can just set that up in the row settings. So if I go to visibility over here, I can choose to limit it to a specific group. Um, you can do this for community accounts when they first sign up. They, uh, you might want to just show them like this data set now, but you can also segment it out to multiple different groups. So say you have different groups and you want them to each be looking at different pieces of content or get access to different types of data, you can also put that in there too. One thing that you might want to consider doing is hosting events around your data to kind of get people more engaged and help them understand, um, you know, how the data sets are structured and so on. So I'm going to actually add an event card. And this is something that is available to Hub Premium users. So you can have events, you can create events from here, but I've already created a data party event. And this is just a way to kind of offer something only for people who are signed in and joining your organization. Um, it incentivizes them to kind of come in and look at your data. You can have an event around it so you can get feedback in person from them. And But more importantly, you can also teach them how to start using this data to make their own maps, do their own um, analyses and notebooks, and share those back with you within this organization. Beyond this, if you ever feel limited by the layout cards, you can also go into any of the text cards and edit it directly using custom HTML and CSS. So for example, we can just add a little bit more flair with a little customization. And now by building outreach into your open data planning, you can grow a community that not only downloads your data, but also uses it to make informed decisions. Um, and also can share those decisions, those maps, and those results back with you. So it really brings the data full circle. Now Manushi is going to share with you some more resources for you to get more engaged with customizing Hub and working with Jupyter Notebooks, and also where you can find the information about the content we have in this presentation if you want to try it out for yourself. I'd like to conclude with a recap of all the steps we took today in this workflow. We started by adding data to our GIS, to the web GIS. We then saw how we can use that data in various of our sites cards, such as the stat card, map card, the chart card, and create compelling visualizations that summarize our data effectively. We then saw how we can pose relevant questions based on that initiative that we are working with. We saw, we, we went and looked for other relevant data on hub.rgis.com that can help us address and answer these questions. We saw how you can perform analysis using all that data in our GIS notebooks and, and feed results of that analysis back to your web GIS, back to your RGIS hub organization. And we added results of that analysis to the map card on our site to clearly have a visual understanding of the particular initiative and the data that, that speaks to it. We also saw examples uh, of how you can crowdsource 
other uh, experiences from citizens and other information from them as well as customize the site based on your specific requirements. I'd also like to leave you with URLs for the particular uh, data sets we worked with. The first one is for the farmers markets from the USDA, US Department of Agriculture website. The second is for the California counties that we searched for on Hub. And the third is a link to the particular notebook in case you'd like to uh, work with it yourself with, with similar data. I'd also like to conclude with resources for you. The first is a link to all of RGS Hub resources. We have, we have webinars that have been previously done for you to better understand Hub. We have links to various uh, documentation, a, a lot of other content that we've created, examples. The second is the gallery of all the beautiful initiatives and sites created by our customers. The other three are learn lessons, learn paths that have been put together uh, to get familiar and up to speed with RGS Hub Basic. And the other two get, get you up to date and up to speed with uh, RGS Hub Premium in order to make you a power user. The other two uh, URLs that you see there are similar to uh, are uh, will are addressing the analysis that we did they're similar to the analysis that we did previously so for those of us who are de developers data scientists data analysts and would love to learn how data can be used to then feed in uh, uh, results and maps back to your hub onto your back to your site and I encourage you to check out our civic analytics uh, with RGS Hub series. We have a lot of examples for addressing dif different civic use cases using a lot of different tools and techniques in Python and the RGS API for Python. And for those of us who are power users and would like to leverage uh, our uh, our RGS Hub experience using Python scripts. I invite you to check out our uh, Hub's RGS Hub's Python library that helps you automate a lot of your different uh, workflows of interest using uh, uh, the Python library, RGS Hub's Python library. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time today. Thank you for uh, attending our session. I hope this session was valuable to you and your work and we'd love to hear feedback from you on GeoNet. Feel free to reach out to us on GeoNet and connect with us. I believe we also have a feedback uh, uh, session uh, survey link provided here. I, I request you to take the survey. We do take your uh, feedback, we do take your suggestions very seriously and we hope to connect with you on GeoNet and beyond. Have a great rest of your Dev Summit. Thank you.